Welcome to my channel Fly Little Birds and we're heading for September which is back to school so for those of you who are in different countries like USA your children might already be back to school for those of us in the UK we're about to hit that and that's about to happen so this channel is all about adoption fostering childhood trauma family life I've got two sibling boys who are 12 and 13. First thing to say about my two sibling boys they are gorgeous they are lovely but one thing is they absolutely hate school and there's lots of reasons for that and I'm just going to go through those now so first of all there's the academic side they can't always understand what's happening for the eldest one in particular he is probably the least uh, able in his in his classes and so every time he goes in and he's got to listen to a lesson he really really struggles and I guess for anybody that goes to school on a daily basis and actually finds it really hard to understand what people require of you what want of you then that's really tricky for anybody and so I really feel for him that breaks our heart so I don't know how difficult it can be for him so he says things like school is boring he doesn't enjoy it unfortunately his option for that would be to go on his gaming his screens and obviously we have to be really careful around that because that would be the thing all of the time so we're trying really hard to make sure that we keep his eyes open to what life can offer him even if he has low academic abilities loads of things that life can offer him so that's the first problem for him the other sibling he finds it really hard to socialize so he's not so bad in the classroom some of his subjects he actually enjoys because he loves learning about history he has a curious inquisitive mind so he loves the history he loves the science again his ability is quite a long way behind most of his peers but he can actually access enough I think to get some interest going in some subjects in some areas and his report reflects that he tries quite hard in some of those subjects but for him it's the social side so what will happen is we'll lead up to next week when we're due for them to go back to school and to start with things will be okay but then a few days beforehand what will happen is the anxiety levels will raise so with the older one he'll go more into himself and get a little bit more kind of downcast and sullen and the younger one will be volatile will be difficult defiant let me know in the comments if you experience this with your children and actually to be honest it could be any family that this happens with but i think for adopted foster children it's it's just super difficult because they have so many issues to overcome on top of the other issues of going back into a new year group so yes yeah, so he'll be very challenging and there'll be lots of flitting around running around the house not able to settle to anything probably nearer the time we'll get a few nights where he wakes up um, with dreams but we won't know what they're about so yeah it will get tense it'll get more difficult as we get near to it so the good thing about school for them is they're really good with structure and routine if they know what there is to expect I guess going into a new year group there is a lot of unexpected things things they don't understand and they'll have different teachers they'll possibly be in different classrooms so they won't like that not knowing but once they get into it for the first few weeks they do well and actually they enjoy the first few weeks because they get to meet their friends again uh, they decide that at least half of their teachers are worthy of teaching they'll come home and tell us all the stories about the good stuff and the bad stuff but for the first few weeks they'll be quite positive because we have thought about homeschooling we have looked into it thought about it but what we found during the pandemic is lack of structure cannot work for them so whereas we might want to go with homeschooling that isn't trying to replicate school and giving them a free reign of learning and gaining knowledge and experiences and fun stuff and not just sitting down to do an hour of you know maths or math or an hour, an hour of english or writing but actually giving them some life experiences they find that lack of structure impossible so we would have been replicating pretty much what they've been doing at school and they're going to do it less for us than they are for school so we looked into it we've ruled it out but after a while everything will just get kind of more difficult for them and the little one will start falling out with different friendships 
he has got a great sense of injustice so anything that goes wrong or anybody who says anything wrong or does anything wrong he's straight on it unfortunately he can't necessarily see that in himself he can't necessarily reflect back on him and so he will fall out with quite a lot of people quite quickly and we will then have him coming home and being very explosive. It might not happen when he first walks through the door, but it will certainly happen at some point in the evening. He'll have a big meltdown. So we've been given some tools to think about from when he's had his recent assessment where the diagnosis was not autism, was not ADHD, it was childhood development trauma. We were given some tools around that, uh, some things that we were told that we could use questions and answer books some things on the walls for him to look at so if he's struggling with getting ready for school or struggling when he gets home from school stuff that he can see visually to help him kind of work through different processes we were also um, advised to maybe get him some sort of cocooning so that could be a weighted blanket it could be a bean bag or it could be an area so perhaps i'll spend another video talking to you about what works when we get hold of those things because at the moment kind of what we do is we have calm areas my house is set up in a way uh, i don't really want to show you today because it's it's fairly tidy but it's probably not as tight as what I'd want it to be if I showed you but I have kind of like quite a lot of plants around and there are areas where I know work really well for both boys where they actually spend time together so there's a settee where they always sit in the living room there's areas which kind of work for them in their own bedrooms we were told to think about things that that can cocoon the younger one particularly the older one wouldn't want that but the younger one definitely could benefit from that so perhaps when I've got some of those things in I've got some of those little uh, books ready and things that go on the wall I can show you how I'm doing that it's going to be particularly helpful for bathroom routines which we find both of them really really struggle with hygiene sensitivity to certain stuff uh, water brushing teeth that type of stuff again let me know if you experience that all of that means that actually their hygiene levels are really poor and unfortunately we have to wander around in the hallway outside and make sure that the teeth have actually been brushed e even the hair is actually getting washed in the shower and they're too old for us to be doing that but they are functioning at a much younger level so we have to kind of do that we will set up things to be very tight when they go back to school when i mean tight boundaries will be very tight uh, there'll be little room for maneuver so if they come home and they seem all over the place so for the older one that would look like he would kind of scoot upstairs really quickly not show me what is in his bag and just try to get onto the computer really quickly now that is partly peer pressure but that's partly him not being able to cope with the idea that actually he may have homework and he's going to go into year nine so he's 13 he he can't just not do it but for him sometimes he, he if he, he thinks if he blocks it out it won't be there so he'll run quickly up the stairs try and get on the computer quite quickly say that he's done everything uh, but when i check back he, he won't have done everything and for the younger one he'll come in and start making like demands lots of demands which you will never satisfy because actually what it is is anxiety and so what we will have to do is after a few weeks when things start going downhill we will have to spend a lot of time with them and we will have to be alongside them a lot talking to them about things getting them to open up if they can if they can't just spending time and being quite present in the moment for them some more good things about school is when they do build up a good relationship with a teacher they really rate that teacher and they rate that relationship more than most children would so i know for my older son he really enjoys his tutor group which has stayed the same throughout the whole of schooling and he speaks so highly of this teacher they you would think that she was a relative and that's really lovely because that's somebody that you trust in the school and also that happens with teachers more so with a younger one if he rates a teacher thinks they're really good he'll actually say oh, i really like i really like that teacher they're a really good teacher so they're allowing other adults into their life to be a good positive influence for them and I do find with my boys sometimes they are better with adults or younger children than their own age so if they find an adult in school that they really really rate and really get on well with then that's a really positive thing for them they have formed friendships they do have friends that they relate to and they talk about but of course friendships can be quite toxic 
can be persuasive and when you have children who for want of a better word can't always stand up for themselves and can't always have the uh, cognitive awareness to actually know what's going on around them then that's not always a positive thing and we have to keep a really tight eye on those friendships as well it can be sometimes that we find that our boys are being manipulated into things which are not suitable for them they're not ready for and we have to work quite hard to pull that back so that can friendships can be a positive and a negative in school so guys i wish you all the best with the start of school if it's already happened if you're fostering or adopting of course you're not alone in the experiences that you have and i hope this channel will show you that you're not alone if you check out some of my playlists you'll see all the experiences that we go through as a family so i'll link our adoption stories at the end and that is stories about our whole whole journey really from the beginning to all the different things that we've gone through when we first had our boys as fostered boys in the beginning so thank you for watching fly little birds and i'll see you on my channel thank you